most people, when they face a survival situation, generally don't have a choice in the matter. It's either a do or die type of deal. However, in my case, my survival situation, well, it was completely voluntary. You see, for the last decade, I've worked as a wildlife adventurer and reality TV cameraman, and in early 2015, I was cast as an embedded cameraman on a reality TV survival show, meaning that I would both be a participant trying to survive as well as a camera operator documenting the entire ordeal. As part of the final casting process, I flew to LA and met with producers and executives and casting agents. They wanted to know a little bit more about my background. And they asked me, what sort of survival experience did I have? And I told them, I didn't have any. But I lived in Montana, and I was pretty good at camping. <laughs> that answer must have been good enough, because I would join 13 others for a very unique survival adventure. These 13 guys were from all across the US from a variety of backgrounds. We had a doctor, a lawyer, a cop, a paramedic, a radio DJ, a little bit of everything. Most of these guys, however, had little to no experience in outdoors. Some of them had never even been car camping before, yet now they were going to try to survive on a des deserted island for a month. The show would air on prime time and was called The Island with Bear Grylls. Now, this wasn't a game show. There was no competitions for pizza, there was no prizes, and there would be no winner. And unlike most reality shows, there was no outside production team. The entire thing would be filmed by us. Ten regular guys, four professional cameramen. But all of us would have to survive together. We just had the clothes on our backs, three knives, three machetes, a single day's supply of water, and a ton of camera gear. So here's my headshot the day before I left for the island. And people often say the camera adds 10 pounds. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know for a fact that I gained 10 pounds before I left for the island. It was my only survival preparation tactic. <laughs> I, I could have read some survival books or practiced tying knots, but instead I ate as much ice cream as I could. It, it's not nearly as fun as it sounds. So there we were, the 14 of us, about to be dropped off on this island. And I remember looking around at the, other, the 13 others and thinking to myself, one of these guys has to know what they're doing. There must be a leader amongst, you know, amongst all of us. And it sort of started to dawn on me what I was about to do. I was most likely going to be starving, really thirsty, and I was going to have to film the entire thing. I started to feel a little overwhelmed. I'm certainly no survival expert. Real survival experts well, they're masters at handling the four basic elements of survival. That is, they can find food, uh, search for water, build a shelter, and make fire. Well, our group, we were certainly not experts. But dealing with those four basic elements would be our most immediate challenge as soon as we were dropped off. We'd have to, to figure out which ones to prioritize and which ones could wait until later. However, as soon as we were dropped off, we started to make a lot of mistakes. And uh, hindsight is 2020, but our top five list of mistakes is that we mistakenly identified brackish water for fresh water. We then contaminated the last of our fresh water supplies with some of that brackish water. We overexerted ourselves during the hot hours of the day. Um, we had a pretty bad campsite location initially, and maybe most importantly, we did not spend enough time right away looking for water. And by the time uh, we really needed it, it was sort of too late. Obviously, things were not going very well. By night two, we were completely out of water. Our group was in chaos, and we were having a hard time even making the most basic decisions. We knew that if we didn't find water soon, our TV show would be very short-lived. So, on the morning of day three, we decided to split up and look for water. The doctor, Buck and myself, went to the far side of the island in hopes of kind of one last ditch effort to find water. 
The good news is that we did find water. The bad news is we didn't get back to camp until two members of our group had to leave the island because of severe dehydration and exhaustion. So we were in a tough place. And like I said, the basics of survival are taking care of those four elements. And ironically, by the end of day four, once we had found water, uh, we were doing pretty well. We had uh, made fire, we were building shelters, and we had found some food. But we were still a ragged group of castaways. And I think what can put our perspective, our situation in perspective, uh, is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so we had taken care of the, the, our physical needs, but we hadn't even thought about the rest of the levels of the pyramid. How did we go about taking care of our, non -phys our non-physical needs? Because ultimately, we had this really fulfilling, life-transforming experience. What made the difference for us? And the answer is pretty simple. We made a really good camp. Benji, one of the other camera guys, was all gung-ho about this giant piece of driftwood. He wanted to use it as our dining table. And in my mind, I thought this was just totally impractical. It was this huge table. It was going to waste a lot of energy to move it to camp. But we did it. And once we had that table, it became the kind of the centerpiece of our, our community. We ate there, we played games there, we hung out there. Uh, and the island, rather than a place to endure, slowly became a place that we wanted to be. You know, we could have gone all Lord of the Flies out there. <laughs> Truthfully, I mean, it could have gone bad and things were tough, but it didn't. It certainly wasn't utopia and we had our issues. Um, but we, we came together, we resolved our conflicts peacefully, we divided our food equally, and we did our best to communicate with one another. And there was no leader. We all contributed to the success of the whole. And I think, in, in a lot of ways, I've always taken community for granted. But after this experience, I realized just how vital community is. I wouldn't have been able to make it without the 13 others. Long-term survival really requires community. And I don't just mean survival in a physical sense, but to really thrive, uh, to feel safe, to feel a sense of belonging and a sense of purpose, we have to have community. And I think the main takeaway from my experience is that a strong community doesn't just happen by accident. We must, we must build it, we must nurture it, and we must rely upon it. And if we do that, we can face any obstacle, whether that be surviving on an island for a TV show or just face the challenges that life inevitably has for us. Thank you.